Hi, I'm Asuma Mishu. In today's research so far, we are going to talk about oral health in severe mental ill health population. My background, I worked as a clinical dentist for five years. Then I did my MSc in dental public health and PhD in epidemiology and public health. Currently, I'm working as a public health researcher at the Department of Health Science, University of York. We know good oral health is integral to general health and well-being. However, there is huge global burden of oral diseases. Tooth decay, what is known as dental caries, is one of the most prevalent conditions. Other conditions like periodontitis, that is inflammation of tooth supporting structure, uh, early loss of tooth, dental erosions, these are also common. The burden of oral disease is particularly high for socially disadvantaged population group. People with severe mental ill health, especially vulnerable group. We know life expectancy of people with mental illness is 20 to 25 years lower than the general population. And physical health comorbidity is a major cause of this mortality gap. But what about oral health? Oral health remains largely neglected issue in this population. Uh, the current evidence shows that oral health among people with severe mental illness is poorer than general population with higher prevalence and greater severity of dental diseases. People with severe mental illness, they have significantly higher caries rate and tooth loss. So, what are the impacts of poor oral health in their life? Uh, we know poor oral health has profound effect on general health and overall quality of life. Dental conditions can cause pain, eating difficulty, sleeping disturbance, and other functional limitations. In addition, poor oral health affects self-esteem, social interaction, which contributes further to the social withdrawal and isolation in this population. Not only that, some oral conditions are associated with other physical conditions like coronary heart disease, diabetes, and we know these comorbid conditions are commonly experienced by people with mental illness. So why this group is more susceptible to oral diseases? In general, poor oral hygiene, dietary habits, poor nutrition, heavy consumption of sugary food and drinks, smoking, other form of tobacco consumption, alcohol drinking. These are some individual level common causes of poor oral health. In addition, dental phobia, substance misuse, adverse side effect of antipsychotic and antidepressant medications that includes gerostomia or dry mouth and bruxism, these are some specific risk factors for this population. Actually, a complex ranges of underlying factors are associated with poor oral health, which is particularly, particularly true for this population. People with mental illness are negatively impacted by wider social determinants of health, including poverty, unemployment, housing insecurity, social isolation, etc. So there are other social and financial barriers for accessing oral health care services, which results in reduced dental service use by these populations. All these issues are significant risk factors for poor oral health, unfortunately, which is often ignored. To tackle these inequalities and to improve oral health in this population, it is important to explore effective oral health interventions for people with mental illness. Traditional interventional interventions like individual level behavioral change interventions might not be effective for this population. We need to consider more holistic approach to tackle these risk factors and identify effective oral health promotion mechanisms for these populations. That's all for today.